All right, what we've got here is problem 2.68 from the Frank White Fluid Mechanics textbook. And this is gonna be a problem where we deal with fluid pressure. So basically what we have is we've got oil that's contained in here. Notice it gives you the specific gravity number, so uh, 0.83. And then what this is showing us here is a triangular gate. And this is showing you like the looking down on it view. This pink line right here is the side view. All right, so if you could stare down at the gate, it would look like this triangle. Okay, and notice also there is this force P right here at B. Okay, so it tells us the isosceles triangle gate AB, which is right here, is hinged at A. So that means it could rotate back and forth, right? And it weighs 1,500 newtons. Then it asks, what horizontal force P is required at point B for equilibrium? And we're going to let gamma equal 9790. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. So anytime you see a problem like this, you gotta think about what's happening to the problem. So if we have a hinge here on the gate, and forget about force P here, then the oil is gonna have a fluid pressure, right? It's gonna apply a force to this gate, and it could rotate the gate you know, to the right, so it would open the gate, and then the oil would flow out. Okay, so that's not what we want. We want this force P here to keep the gate shut, right? So that puts it in equilibrium. Okay, so what we need to do is figure out the force created by the oil on the gate. All right, now the equation that we're gonna use for that is F equals gamma HC times A. And we'll go over what those are in just a second. And then we also need to know where this force acts on the gate. Okay, so the equation for that will be YCP, all right, so CP here is standing for center of pressure, and that's gonna equal negative IXX, so moment of inertia about the x-axis, times sine theta over HC times A. All right, so first thing we wanna do, let's go ahead and find um, the area and HC, because those are used in both of these, and then we'll finish out the rest. All right, so let's go ahead and Let's look at this triangle. So it says it's an isosceles triangle. And this length here is one. So we've got that. And we know this vertical distance here is two. So that's gonna be important to remember. Now what I need to find the area for this triangle, I need to know um, the length basically. All right, so I need to know the height here. So I wanna know what L is, okay? So let's go ahead and find L. So L, if we look at this scenario here, I've got two meters in the vertical distance and then I've got this 50 degree angle, right? So if we think about it, then L is going to be two over sine 50, okay? And again, if you wanna draw a little right triangle here, you can see it a little bit better. So this angle here is 50, this length here is two, and I need this length right here. This right here is L, it corresponds to this, okay? Remember, this is like looking straight at the gate, like you're looking down on the gate, okay? So L here is the hypotenuse, we know sine of 50 is opposite over hypotenuse. So this is just restructuring that, that equation, right? If you want, we can write it like this. Um, so it's opposite over hypotenuse. So we just you know solve for L here. Okay, so that's gonna be L for the triangle. And we can plug that in the calculator. We get 2.611 uh, meters. And then now we can find the area of the triangle. So the area in these equations is the area that's in contact with the fluid. Okay, so we want the you know, face of the triangle, meaning that area. So area of a triangle is just one half base times height. So we have one half times one meter times 2.611 meters. That gives us 1.305 meters squared. All right, so this is how much area on the gates in contact with the oil. And now we need HC. 
All right, now let's think about what HC is. So HC, this is going to be the distance measured from the top line of the fluid. So up here, where this little arrow is. I'm gonna run out of room here. So measured from the top of the fluid down to the centroid of the area that's in contact with the fluid. So we'll just put uh, distance measured from top of fluid to C. So remember that's the centroid of the area. I'm out of room here, so we can't put all that in there. So that is what we're looking for. Okay, so let's draw another triangle here. Uh, okay, so we have the triangle. Remember for a triangle, location of the centroid is right here, and this distance is h over 3. That's the generic equation, right? So for our case, h, which is the height of the triangle, is going to be 2.611 over 3. All right, so that's 0.87. So now what we're going to do is use this to calculate HC. All right, so let's kind of draw out another figure here. So this is this pink line right here. Okay, so C is down 0.87, and the units there's meters. All right, so we've got C right here. This is 0.87 meters. And we've got the top of the fluid. All right, so this is the top of the fluid right here. All right, HC is gonna go from the top down to the centroid. All right, and HC is always a vertical distance, not gonna be at an angle. It's gonna be a vertical distance. and it's always measured from the top of the fluid. We'll put another note here. So measure from top of the fluid to uh, centroid of area. All right, there we go, had more room that time. All right, so that means we need to figure out what we've got. So if we look at this picture, I'm dropping down three meters before I even get to the gate, right? So we've got this three meters right here and then I need to figure out what this length is. All right, how would we figure that out? Well, if we look, we've got this 50 degree angle right there, All right? So that means this distance right here, or right here, is going to be uh, 0.87 sine of 50, because if this is 50, then that means this is 50 degrees here also. So this right here is 0.87 sine 50, and that is going to give us HC. All right, so we got the 3 plus the 0.87 sine 50. And let's see, what is that value? 3.666 meters. Okay, so we've got our area here, we've got our HC. And the biggest mistake I see students making on this calculation is they either put HC at an angle or they don't measure from the top of the fluid, okay? It's got to be measured from the top going down in a vertical direction to the centroid of the area, okay? So now we've got those two things and with that we can go ahead and start to calculate, you know, the force and then YCP. So we can calculate, let's do the force first, I guess. Okay, so this will be the force created by the oil on the gate. So it's gonna be gamma times HC times A. Gamma is going to be the gamma for the fluid. So this is oil, but we're given the SG value. All right, well remember, if you're given the SG value, the way you find gamma is we're gonna multiply SG times gamma for water, which was given as 97.90, okay? And if you want, you might want to put a little W here, because that's for water. All right, so we're going to do the 0.83 times 
times 9790. All right, this is giving us gamma for the oil. And then we're going to multiply by HC. All right, so 3.666 meters. And then the area, so that area that's in contact with the fluid, so 1.305 meters squared. And that is going to be 38,894 newtons. All right, so notice your units will work out right. This will cancel with these. And we get units of force, which is what we should get, right? Okay. So there's our force. We'll use that in just a second. Now I need to know where this acts on the gate. Okay, it's not going to act through the centroid on the gate because the deeper we go down, the more fluid pressure we have, right? So the force is going to act below that centroid. And that's why we have this little negative sign here in this equation. So this negative sign just tells you to go below the centroid. That's what that is there for. So now let's go ahead and write this back out. Okay, let's find IXX. So that's just moment of inertia about the x-axis for this triangle. So you would look in the centroid tables and get the equation base times height cubed over 36 for a triangle, and then plug in your numbers. So base is one meter. Height, this is height of the triangle, not HC. So height of the triangle is going to be um, the 2.611. And I should be writing the units here. So that's going to be meters, and then we're cubing that, and then over 36. So with that, we get 0.4944 meters to the fourth. And that's our moment of inertia about the x-axis. Right. Okay, so now we've got this. Let's go ahead and plug everything in here. All right, so 0.4944 meters to the fourth. Sine theta, this theta angle is the angle that your area is going to make with the fluid. So here we've got 50 degrees. So we're just going to do sine of 50. Make sure your calculator is in degrees. And then we need to put that over HC times A. So HC is 3.66. Area is 1.305 meters squared. So now you get negative 0 0.0792. And that's meters. All right. So now I've got F. We've got YCP. Now we can work on figuring out what P is. Uh, going to have to be in order for us to have equilibrium. So basically we want the force created by the oil to cancel out with this force P so that the gate doesn't swing open. All right. So to do this, we're going to basically kind of do like a statics problem. We're going to draw a free body diagram of the gate. So this is just the side view of the gate uh, matches this you know, pink line here. And then let's put our forces on here. All right. I know I have P. And then let's put the centroid. We know the centroid is right here. Um, and this distance was 0.87. And then I know my force right here, the 38,898 Newton force, this is going to act at a distance of 0 0.0792 meters below the centroid. So that means we're going to come down here. And this is where that force is going to act. Okay, so that's what that YCP tells you. The negative again is just to tell you it's below centroid. All right, and then this distance right here, um, this is going to be that height of the triangle or L, what I called L up here. So 2.611 minus these two lengths here. So let's write this out. Okay, so 1.661 meters is that length. And then we have one other force to put on here. Can y'all figure out what it is? Well, if we move this back up here, it weighs 1,500 newtons. So we got to put that weight on here. 
and the weight is going to act at that centroid location. Okay, so now we've got 1500 newtons. Last thing I'm going to put on here are the angles. So this is 50, which makes this 40 up here. Okay, so what we're doing now is basically just an equilibrium problem from statics, just 2D equilibrium. I want to figure out what P is. Easiest way to do that with one equation is going to be to use a moment equation. And I'm going to do it about point A. Can you all figure out why I'd pick point A? Because we could pick any point. If we put it at point A, I don't have to worry about the hinge forces and the couple moment. Actually, there wouldn't be a couple moment, but I don't have to worry about the hinge forces here. If you did it about point C or here, for instance, you'd have to worry about the X and Y component for the hinge. All right. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and find the moment about A for these three forces. So let's start with the weight right here. So 1500 newtons, that's the force. I need a perpendicular distance. All right, so I need this distance here. And how are we going to find that? Well, what about 0.87 sine 40? Okay, so there's that. This is going to be a clockwise moment, so it's negative. All right. And I know it's clockwise because if I were to pull down on this, it's going to rotate, you know, that way clockwise about A. Next, let's do this force F. So 38,894 newtons. Um, that distance, we need the perpendicular distance. So that means I need this distance right here. All right, well, what's that distance? Well, it's going to be this plus this, right? So let's put those in here. And these are in meters. And that one should be positive or negative? It's going to be positive, right? Because if I have this here, it's got a hinge, I'll do this, it's going to go that way, counterclockwise. And then finally, we've got this distance right here, P. Okay, so you have P, that's our force. And then our distance, you can do this two ways. Um, you could, you know, add up this length, which is 2.611, do sine of 50. Or if you look back up at this picture, we know this vertical length here is 2, right? So it gives you the same thing. Um, either one would work. I'll just put the 2.611 sine 50. Okay, and then is that going to be positive or negative? That one's going to be negative, right? Because if I were to push, it's going to rotate clockwise about A. So clockwise is negative. Set it to zero. And then one equation, one unknown, we can solve for P. And we get P equals 18,039.7. Units here will be newtons, All right? Because this is meters. That's newtons and that's meters. So all the meters cancel out. There you go. So this is how much force needs to be applied going to the left to counteract the force felt on the gate uh, by the oil. All right, so that's kind of how you use that force equation and how you use the YCP to figure out where that force is acting on your gate or whatever the, the surface you're looking at is. All right, hopefully y'all found that one helpful. I will see you guys next time for another problem.